but you will not receive the machine that changed the world in your Instagram feed on a daily basis when you talk about transformation. You will receive the information on the left-hand side of the page. And this it captures the, the nature of our problem, is that there are many people who have beautiful advertising, but no substance, and promise that uh, a magic potion can be delivered of transformation of your planet. And I believe in good management, which is what we can get from a very old book. Now, my company, uh, we are for, in many countries, India, Australia, through Asia, the Viva Real or the Zap of uh, equivalent John Shook's era. This is 1978. The topic of one of the first emails known is the renting of an apartment. This is a world of plain advertising and our company in the 1990s struggled to compete against beautiful advertising like this. People think, what is this internet? That cannot be relevant to us. Uh, nowadays, I, my work in our research lab is to build research and development tools and, and things like virtual reality property portals. Isn't this model? How is this possible when you're a digital, you must be immune to disruption and change. This lesson to learn, and this is a, a very old lesson, and one of my frustrations is that many, many people can discuss Kaizen. The Kaizen curve is the red curve. And if we look at uh, the Y axis, this is about your growth. And everyone who has a new company has a very happy story of continuous improvement. But it reaches a point where you improve the efficiency and productivity of your company, you make a new change and a new development, and your growth turns negative. Uh, Japanese concept, which is in the same book, I think, maybe just the next chapter and nobody read it, is kaikaku, is a breakthrough development. And that is the green line. And our business believes in green lines and the unfortunate thing for the Australian economy is that it's dominated by 100-year-old enterprises from the fields of mining, uh, healthcare, banking, and they struggle to believe that a green line, the Kaikaku reinvention, exists. They think it is a, a, a fantasy. It's very plain to us, though, that uh, global competition has come to Australia now. And everyone is desperate to find a way to compete. So this is Amazon, who are now selling on the internet uh, homes made in Estonia. And um, 105,000 American dollars can be delivered in a couple of containers and assembled by two people. So this is clear competition. And we have many players who are global who are very good at data. Airbnb uh, is a remarkable competitor for rentals in Australia. And then their use of data is exceptional and Viva Real uh, is remarkable because they can build this property in Nashville custom made with part hotel, part owned, part rental, part short term rental. We, the, some of the response is to automate work, which looks very impressive, and it is not what they seek. Soon we discover they are actually seeking the quality of resilience. But then their boss has told them, you must go and see the lean and agile teams at REA Group. When we ask them what is in their heart, what is in their heart is the need to keep their job, to become more competitive. And the only route to that is not directly from lean to resilience, it is via management. And in Australia, we don't respect the job of manager. We find, uh, it is a long history of uh, sort of anti-hierarchical, um, we don't like bosses. And this is where we start our world. So I use a very subtle English difference between managing and managering. So managering is behaving in a way that imitates 
the manager you grew up with when you were young. And in Australia, mostly that managering is bad. You imitate a manager. You do not manage and you do not use systems thinking to manage. You likely use micro. I much prefer to start with teaching you lean or agile work principles and putting cards on your wall and using uh, magic rituals of meeting every day. But the path we have learned is first, good management. Second, resilience. Well-managed people become resilient. They bounce back from competition, from challenge. Now, we've also discovered that it is only necessary to have 25% of your people to have crossed from good management to resilience. And many stay because of change in teams and competition and strategy and tactics to invent. And I'm the chief inventor because I'm the chief of the inventors at REA. And here we in what we call hackathons three times a year. It is about diversity of ideas, diversity of people. And we are known for our invention. It's, it's quite famous, but it is no use to be a great inventor if your factory, in this case, a digital factory, cannot create the, the work. And the very worst thing that can happen if you have a, a well-run factory that can change its priorities quickly is that by growing, it will break your management model. And as one of the people who is a, a stakeholder in the management model, I find it just as painful as anybody to find my work broken. But I'm now welcome when, and we have in seven years, three times have had to change our management model because the productivity of our factory was delivering such a right principle. Um, we stand around and we ask questions. We've created a culture and a sense of challenge for our people. We work in teams. And so much of what we do, we thought came from the school of agile software development. And it's just with some wisdom and reflection in the time of uh, the great people of Lean that we have come to understand that what we invented in agile work was actually being an executive on the left talking to a young technology person. And this is one of our most important secrets that consultants will never tell you is bringing people close together and sharing their understanding of the work and becoming great listeners as managers is the most important thing. Great coaches and ways. Muda in those three areas and Muda in the area of decision making. And by coincidence, these are our focuses to make our workplace more productive. This is our model. We, we share that widely. It starts with visualized work. Prioritization is hard. We have to develop systems for that. Work must be owned. We talk daily and we review our system of work monthly. These rules apply for every single team in our organization. And this is how we have transformed the company from being uh, thinking they had long-term control and plans, now realistically knowing that it is daily conversation that avoids our disruption. Uh, that looks like in the workplace, this, this is the visualization, this is the team, and it's multidisciplinary. These look like software development tasks, but they include sales <coughs> tasks. And these, in fact, are salespeople. There are the targets below. The work flows around this mini factory in a, in a way that anybody can walk up and understand. And this is my goal. If I Google in Australia the phrase, my manager is, the answers are terrible. <laughs> the result from the Google search is people are searching for bullying, rudeness, and incompetence. And my mission is to make people say, I joined REA Group because I heard the managers were great. So, for digital and our organization. And the inspiration comes from Konosuke Matsushita, who in the 1970s, and this quotes from 1980, explained why digital transformation would be so popular 40 years later. 
is because the Japanese environment was complex, difficult, unpredictable and competitive. So they needed a remarkable way of working, a way of transforming manufacturing. In the digital world in 2020, we face the same complexity, difficulty and hazards and it's time for everyone to adopt a lean mindset. These are the books I read.